What is up, guys? As you can tell, Justin is doing a little bit of magic for us today. <laughs> he literally just made his camera raise up from the... Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have one of those sitting standing desks. And so sometimes I, I sit until I, my back hurts and then I stand until my back hurts and then I sit until my back hurts and it's productive sometimes. So you, you know how to take all the magic out of a magic trick. <laughs> yes, I do. Exactly. That is part of my um, uh, one of my many skills is to ruin the magic. Speaking of that, I actually we're going to be going on a, on a trip soon and I'm going to go see the magician Raza. A Reza? I'm not sure if it's Reza or Raza. It's supposed to be really good, so I'm excited to see that. Excellent. Illusion, Excellent. Illusionist, I should say. They, they call them illusionists now, I guess. Um, so, to, I, got, go I got a question for you, Nick. If you okay. ask, don't mind me leading off with a question. So our topic for tonight is... Um, what exactly is our topic for tonight? Well, our topic is, first of all, to congratulate everyone that's here, like AJC. I cannot believe that you're here at start time. You're never here on start time, and I'm really excited because... AJC is going to uh, start doing some articles actually on the website, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. Uh, I'm trying to just finish up the last little bits on the website that, to get him started, but I'm excited to see what he brings. But today's topic is all going to be about deals, values, best values that we've found, that we've used, that we like, that we can bring to you. And I think that's important because, you know, sometimes people talk to you about values in home audio, home video. Uh and they don't have experience with some of the products that we have had. So, um, go ahead. And I think it's important to remember that the, the best value is not always the cheapest. That's correct. Yep. That is, um, that's, and I, I think for example, the, um, uh, the scar audio subwoofer that I tested on my channel this last weekend and the Scario box I've tested before kind of with different subwoofers in it. It was fine. The subwoofer, I mean, I, I was a 500 watt amp. I got 129 decibels out of it at the, uh, on the windshield, which is more than I thought I would get. I never tested something like that before. So I had no idea what I would actually get, but I didn't, just didn't like the way the subwoofer sounded. You know what? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I had mentioned on my last video, that one of the amplifiers that I like for home audio was the Crown XTI, which is more expensive than, say, the Behringer. Behringer put out a lot more output. And I mentioned why I like that. And to make a long story short, I had posted this also on the forum. And Josh Evans, who is a professional sound guy, this is what he does for a living for like PA sound systems. And he, he works with Crown and other brands. And he said, hey, look, I'm telling you that there is a reason why the Crown sounds better. And it's the dampening factor. And the dampening factor, I think, on the crown was 500, and dampening factor on the Behringer was like 148. So it's significant difference, and you know that just helps uh, start and stop the the cone when it's supposed to. And you know, and he goes into detail. If you want more detail, you should just check out the forum and, and look at that. But so, it's pretty, um, pretty good. Uh, 1337 IoT is that elite Internet of Things. Um, uh, has a comment. SB Acoustics is a top value brand, 99 cent better, 99 percent better than all car audio brands and a third of the price. But at the same time, it's not like it's dirt cheap because I've got some uh, SB Acoustics speakers in my door. I've had them for about three or four years. They were 60 bucks each when I bought them. And and while, while that's, you know, for speakers, you can spend a lot of money, right? But 60 bucks isn't that terribly expensive, but it's also not the cheapest one out there. So here's an but example of something. It's also that's... like, what what is your budget, right? Because right. when we talk about right. best value, the best value for someone that's looking for high ticket items, maybe it's SB Acoustics, where if we're talking about best value and you want to spend significantly less than that, then there's probably a different product out there. Right. And it's so dependent upon the context. Uh, I had a message on Instagram or something today. Um. <laughs> they, they, yeah, Earl Geddes is a genius, so I'm not going to argue with anything he says. <laughs> go ahead. Um, go ahead. What are you going to say? Um, well, read Elliot's comment first. Or first. Well, when we're talking about this, he's saying, hey, look, it's important to note that when we're talking about uh, ratio performance to cost and that performance is sound quality, SPL, wattage, or all. And he's right. You know, and we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that as as we go along because not only are we going to do audio today, we're also going to talk about some video. I have some TVs I want to bring to your attention, and they're ones I own. So it's not something that I saw in the store or whatever. It's something that I have firsthand experience with. So it's not going to be something that you're going to see in whatever. All right, go ahead, Justin. 
I'm sorry. So the, the person messaged me and asked for advice on some subwoofers. They wanted to get loud. They had a price point they wanted to stay under, which was yeah. large enough that they wouldn't have any trouble getting any subwoofer they really wanted. And they had a 750 watt amp and no idea what car they're in, right? No idea of anything else. It's like, well, if you just want to get loud, you want something in lots of cone area, high efficiency, you know, a, a 750 watt sundown subwoofer right would be fine or a big 15 or the the mx15 or something like that ultimax 15 sure. because 750 watts is you know some people it's a lot of power some people say it's not but there's a gazillion great subwoofers that you can use that would get really loud on 750 watts and it's like what are you putting it into like a mazda miata I, I, right i mean the context matters it does so with that in mind let's start talking about some of the best values um, we both put some stuff on now we broke it down into home audio and video and we broke it down to car audio, but we both put on some subwoofers. Uh, I put on a subwoofer and you put on a subwoofer. I want to start with subwoofers because I think subwoofers are pretty interesting. Um, my subwoofer, actually let's, let's go with one of yours first. All right. What, the first one that I listed, cause you listed see if three, right? Yeah, I, I listed several kind of like different examples is what I was kind of sure. shooting for. So let me see if I can share my screen and show you one. And this is a subwoofer I have experience with. So it is one that I'm I'm familiar with. There you go. It's kind of funny when we talk about value too, because when we're talking about value, one of one of the things I have here is actually like one of the most expensive, <laughs> but I think it's the most value still. So. All right. Well, actually okay. two maybe. Well, first of all, a great way to get a lot of bang for the buck is to stick with house brands. Mm. Sure. Um, and so I think probably most of yours are going to be Dayton Audios and most of mine are too. And, you know, is it a home sub? Is it a car sub? It's a subwoofer. You can use it in, in either environment, right? And I've got one of these and it is the Dayton Audio Classic 12-inch 4-ohm subwoofer. It's what I use in my home theater. I got to build on my channel. I absolutely love it. I think it sounds fantastic. But when I bought mine, it was 80 bucks. And oh. now it's 125. Yeah, I was actually thinking that that's kind of it seems expensive for a 12 inch sub now for some reason. Um for a 300 watt four ohm single voice coil subwoofer, I don't know. I I at 80 bucks, I thought it was a pretty good deal. At 125 I'm I'm noping out of that one, my friend. I'm, here's an example of one that I, I I searched for it to put it on here, thinking, oh yeah, great deal, good price. Sure, it's not a 500 watt sub, but you don't necessarily need that much. The only thing it really has going for it is it is either a 250 or a 300 watt subwoofer. I don't remember remember off the top of my head. I guess I could scroll down and look, couldn't I? It's right here in front of me. Um, you could, but that is hard. 250, yeah. <laughs> scrolling down is such a challenge. <laughs> um, <laughs> You don't have to put a huge amp on it, right? You know, a pair of these have cheap 500 watt amp and you're off and running in your car. One of these on a 250 watt plate amp in your, in your home theater and you're off and running. Whereas if you were to upgrade to a more expensive sub, you got to get a more expensive amp to go with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that, that is, that is true. And that's one of the things that I think we should really, and especially if you're talking about home audio, because home audio amplifiers go up drastically in price when we're talking about, um, performance per, per watt. Absolutely. So, and we're talking about design, the got a comment. Read, read his comment there. Yeah. Do remember all things are going up in price drastically at the moment. Same thing happened with the tectonic drivers, mm -hmm. which are the BMRs that we were talking about. They went up significantly in price. Um, yeah, you know, that's interesting because mine is also uh, a Dayton audio and, and I just did one. Um, and I did this for a reason because I believe, and I actually, all of mine, I just did one because I, I wanted to try to pick out what I felt like was the best value out of all of the Oh, hey, we've got some cool stuff going on in the chat. Uh, 69mega.com uh, has new AI that will 84% find a girl for you. So, gentlemen, 84%. So, uh, the I, odds I, in I, your favor. <laughs> while, while we're talking about that we blocked him so while we're talking about that if you guys noticed i have the epics behind me which people asked if i was going to get those out last week and i was trying to i forgot about something about last week and it missed my mind and it does it every year it was my birthday last week <laughs> and i forgot all about it and the day i had planned to work on these was my birthday and my wife's like i'm bringing you out to dinner and i'm like 
why? And she's like, it's your birthday. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so so those are, if you forget like, her birthday, that's forgetting your birthday is fine. Just don't forget uh, hers. I, I won't forget her birthday, but I, I have like this problem with remembering my birthday. I forget about it every single year. And so she, luckily I have a wife who reminds me of these things because otherwise I'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, so here we go. So here's the uh, Dayton Audio MX-15-22. This is what I believe is the best value. Um, they they cut corners in a couple places, right? They do have dual voice coils, which is nice. They cut corners on the actual frame, obviously, but that frame is really beefy still. It's, I, I have no concerns of it um, uh, ever, ever bending. And also, it's not sharp. Like, a lot of these are sharp on the edges, so you're, you're concerned about cutting yourself, and that's not it. But this thing will seamlessly go down to 20 hertz. It'll handle 800 watts perfectly, uh, which is really all you need. And this thing will, I mean, in like a normal size room, I mean, it'll get louder than you need it to be. I mean, it shakes my entire theater room. It is fantastic. And I put this over the Ultimax because of the fact of the price difference. It's it's a little bit cheaper, has um, a little more excursion. It's just, it's just a good overall. So, and if you want to use it for car audio, it can go down to, one ohm because it's dual two ohm voice coils. Justin, you're muted. And yes, that is a piggly wiggly hat. <clears throat> and so something like that would be perfect if you've got a you know 750, 800 watt amp that's one ohm stable. There you go. You got a big beefy 15. Yeah. And for me, I, I think at 230 bucks for a 15 inch with dual or triple magnets on there. I mean, that's that's nice. And it looks nice too. It's not one of those ugly ones that has, you know, Dayton audio all over or anything. It, it just looks like a nice, almost like a satellite dish. I, so for me, subwoofer, and I'm sure most people knew that, that watch this is the MX-15. Right. And um, one of the ones that I put was the 12 inch version of that because I wanted to put that beside the 12 inch classic. And the 12 inch version of that is just maybe 25 bucks more than the Dayton audio classic subwoofer. So if you're looking for a bigger, beefier subwoofer for 25 bucks more, there you go. Um, the, and this thing right here is sitting in a nice place in the price point. Yeah, at $143, you definitely... And this has plus or minus 18 millimeters of X-Max. I mean, excursion. I mean, that's crazy. Like, that's... For a 12-inch subwoofer, that's awesome. And it's not, it's not a bad-sounding one either. Like, it sounds clean. Yes, yes. It's good. I got yeah. the 10 inch version. I think it's a decent subwoofer. I agree. I mean, I think for value for your money, I, there, it's hard to beat the MX line. It almost, it almost, I hate to say it, like it almost makes me wonder like if we need the Ultimax line anymore, except for the Ultimax 18, because there's no 18 inch version of these. Yeah, I'm kind of not sure what they're doing with their with their product, you know, positioning, <laughs> right? Relative to each other. Not sure what to make yeah. of that. I don't either. I, like to me, when I look at the two, like the Ultimax and the MX-15, they they like model so similarly. It's like, why would I spend the extra money? I don't. I don't know. I, I just don't are. get it. All right, I want to talk about streaming with you for a minute because we talk right. about audio all the time, and obviously because we do audio, but you have to have video, right? In order, uh, if you're in your home, you know, most people want. To have video and audio. I, I, you can listen to CDs by itself. Some people want video in the car. And you can play DVDs in a lot of car stereos. That is true. So let me ask you this. What is... Do you have a favorite? Oh, thanks, man. Living loud with Andy, man. Nick's birthday. Happy birthday, man. Tuned in as always. Have a great show, fellas. And by the way, if you guys don't know, Andy's son hurt his elbow, broke it, and so, you know, definitely keep him in mind and his family in mind. You know, it's it's always scary when something like that happens. So we, we have you in mind. Uh, Andy, we, we are definitely we are definitely thinking about you, buddy, man. Take care. And uh, so do you have a favorite streamer? Let me ask you that. Streaming. Um, when I say streamer, I'm talking about streaming video like a Roku. The, the, the device. Uh, um, device. We yeah. have a we have a Roku in the house and we have an Amazon device in the house. Like and, a fire stick or fire stick. Right, TV. a fire stick. And we didn't like go crazy on these. We just bought the cheapest ones, really. Um, so and they've lasted forever. Uh, we've had the Roku for 
Oh, since before we moved into this house. So like, you know, since 2014 or something like that. So that was the same with me. I used to, I, in fact, I have so many Roku's just sitting around the house. I love them. Nothing wrong with them. But my man right here says it right here. NVIDIA Shield is the way to go. And it is. It is the most expensive streamer. Not mm -hmm. going to lie here. But if you truly care about audio and video, it is the way to go. And here's you the can stream easily from your computer. So you've got movies on your hard drive, right? You can't like there's so many different things that you can do. You can stream, like you said, to uh, to your to a computer if you want or from a computer. So like I, I have uh, things like. Um, oh. Sorry, I was trying to pull it up on Amazon. So I have I have what we call a, a Plex um, a Plex server and yes. I have all my Blu-rays on my hard drive and it streams all the the audio. So all the audio is uncompressed audio, all the videos uncompressed, unlike what you're doing when you're streaming actual like stuff from Netflix or whatever. But not only that, it also is a video game system. Mm. so you can do it's android based and because it's android based it allows you to um it allows you to add like any android based game if you want to it also allows you to do um i i don't know why it's not letting me share the screen it doesn't matter you guys can look up in video shield but it also will allow you to if you have like a gaming computer on your same network mm -hmm. and you have nvidia graphics card in it it'll allow you to stream any of those games to it as well and you just use a bluetooth controller you can play your video games on there when you do that which device is doing the bulk of the processing is it your pc or is it the the shield it's the pc but you don't have to because they also allow you to do one hour blocks at a time of any game that you own that uh allow you to use their computers right because you can you they've they have a system where you can uh, basically offload the processing to the cloud and yeah and that's it's connected to a, a, a high-end graphics card somewhere sitting on the cloud. Exactly. And then uh, he says it right. He says, hey, look, it it's, syncs to your PC super easily. If you have Steam controllers, you can link them through that too. I use an Xbox One controller. It's it's pretty amazing. But not only that, like it has, you can hook up like a USB DAC to it. So you can hook up like, a, you know, if you want a better DAC to it, there's all kinds of different things that you can do to it. You can hook up like retro games. So you can do like Nintendo and Super Nintendo to it. It's it's pretty amazing. So for me, that's something that I have on the list. I don't think we typically go over. Yeah, well, I mean, and it's an example of something that's expensive, but it's still a good value because even though it's expensive, it's powerful. It does so much. And you know what? I mean, compared that to like, say yeah. the price of an it, Xbox and or does, a PlayStation. It does 4K, Dolby Vision, Atmos, everything. So like when you're wanting to stream your 4K with Dolby Vision, so yeah, it does it. It's, it's significantly more powerful than my Roku. And I didn't realize it until I bought one and used it. And the video and audio quality, I mean, think about it. You're, you're getting video output from a graphics card manufacturer, right? Versus... Roku, which is, you know, <laughs> it's fine, but it's, you know, it's buggy sometimes. And, you know, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. But it's 200 bucks. I mean, how does that compare to a, um, uh, Rob says it's just 40 bucks more than an Apple TV, which man, that's not too shabby, but compare that to an Xbox or a PlayStation, which has a lot of the same functionality. Um, that's not too shabby. No, it, it's a really good thing and i think if more people looked into it yeah and you can get the non-pro version for 150 dollars, which is also a good one i bought that originally it looks almost like a tube not my favorite I, I like the pro better but it's it's still cheaper then it's cheaper than an apple tv all right justin what do you got next for us okay i got something that's not on the list um, oh and well actually i think it is on the list yeah i got some component speakers on the list and let me okay. reach back here and grab this prop here so um as some of you know from watching my channel, NVX has been sending me some stuff and uh, they got me set up with a coupon code uh, on their on the NVX website. So if you want to buy something from NVX, and again, what I said when I started, uh, the, the really good deals are oftentimes in house brands. And so house brands, sometimes yeah. you can get a little more bang for your buck. And check this out right here. 
this is their new X series component. This is the mid range for the new X series component. That looks and very strikingly similar to the, the, uh, the <laughs> magnet is not as beefy as the magnet on the Epic. It's just kind of a more standard magnet. It's not, a, I mean, I mean, I'm not having any trouble holding it. It's not a heavy driver by any imagination, but it's carbon fiber and dude, it's real carbon fiber. It's not a wrap. It's not, you know, painted to look like carbon fiber. And one way you can tell um, is sometimes you can see through the weave on carbon fiber. Yeah. Right. Cause I mean, cause the weave is filled with the resin. Right. And so a little bit of light kind of peeks through the resin. And so it's, it's a real carbon fiber cone. And I don't know, once upon a time, they actually were rebranding um, SB acoustics for their X series uh, components, but it does not look like the uh, carbon fiber SB 17. It looks different. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. It's going to be a shame to hide that behind a, a factory speaker grill. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Now is, is that, just that it's just a single component, just so just a mid range. It's a pair, pair of another component says tweeter crossover, um, and you know, and 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 component driver, a whole set. Nice, wow, it's that's you know, really 200 nice. bucks. And if you use the, the DIY audio 10 coupon code, you get uh 10% off, so that's, oh, that's not a bad that's deal. deal, yeah. Well, you know what, and that's that's really cheap for both uh mid ranges and tweeters that are good, and 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 you get you know their crossover i'm really looking forward to seeing how they how they flesh out and how they sound um and i went ahead and and um uh, grab another prop hang on sure when i when i knew they were going to send these to me i went ahead and bought some of their version of the fast rings too and these are 10 bucks i mean they're, you know that's pretty cheap yeah elliot has a good question he said do they provide the ts specs probably not right um, I didn't really give the manual a good look, so I'm not sure if they do or they don't. I, I, I found it most, most of them don't because they just don't expect you to put it in any type of enclosure. So they just don't, you know, um, Hey, uh, Fed, Federico T has a question, uh, cheap DSPs other than mini DSP or Dayton. Um, you know, we'll talk about that if we have time, let's, let's talk about some of the other things. We want to flag that one, come back to it then. Yeah, I'll flag it. If we have time, we'll get back to it. Because we did a whole video on DSP not too long ago, uh, which I would highly recommend looking into that as well. So since we're talking about component sets, I'm going to point to these right here. These are the Dayton Epic 5.5 inch. And I don't care if you're talking about the 5.5 inch or the 7 inch. It doesn't matter to me. To me, best value in mid-range drivers. And by all means, not everything on my list is Dayton. It just happens to be everything that we've talked about so far has been Dayton. Um they're actually on the tape audio speaker stands too. But um, no, these these Epic are expensive. They're $100 uh, a speaker. So I'm not going to say they're cheap because they're not. But here's the deal. This is why they're so impressive in my opinion. My opinion, the reason why it's so impressive is because it does act as a subwoofer and it acts as a mid-range as one. You can easily cross it over for a two-way speaker with a lot of tweeters and have a really good sounding set. Hey, so it has hey, grab, grab John has, K's comment real quick, man. John K's got a comment. Uh, which, which one? Let's see. Uh, at, at 25 Hertz to life. I can't remember who has been around to hear or not, but if you didn't oh. catch the news, uh, another child was born. So congratulations. Oh, congratulations, man. That's awesome. All right. Now you're in that phase where you don't get any sleep for the next six to oh. eight months. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's great though. Yes. So, I just want to say this about the Epics. The Epics are fantastic. So we used to love the date uh, the W5. These sound significantly better than the W5 and have significant more excursions. So the W5 has like 9.25 millimeters of excursion. These have 14 millimeters of excursion. That's a significant <laughs> increase. And they sound really good. Uh, very, very impressive speakers. So if you're looking for a mid-range, and you want something that can produce low bass, like mid thirties bass in a small form factor and be able to cross over with a tweeter. The Epic is the way to go. That's, that's crazy. It, that's it is crazy. like, you, it should not be able to do that. It, they said that they call it, I mean, they call it a subwoofer, an extended range subwoofer. I just really think it, it needs its own little, I, I feel like it needs its own, yeah, they call it an extended range. So it's not really an extended range somewhere. It's more like a sub mid, a mid. I don't, I don't you know. know I think about um, 
the Dayton Audio Reference Series drivers, um, the, the, the reference subwoofers, the ones with the aluminum cone, they're oh, yeah. designed to have, um, like they have like a shorting ring. So they're designed to be able to play up really high to match up to your, your mid bases or something like that. And this is the same concept, only it's a small driver, right? So it's got a yeah. very wide bandwidth. I agree. I think it's pretty amazing. I, for in my opinion, um, the best value mid range, but I know you have something different. So I'm curious. I have, I have another prop here. Another prop. Another hey, props prop. are good. I have, I have um, props too. They're behind me. So yeah, that's, I don't want it to sound like the parts express show, but if you've ever been uh, browsing parts express website, they sell <laughs> this right here. This is the infamous polycone buyout speaker right and yeah. you know it's a buyout speaker so it's just a li temporary limited time no they, they've been selling this sucker forever i think buyout might be one of their brands or something and once upon this was like once upon a time this was five or six bucks and now it's up to eight but still eight bucks for a six and a half inch driver that's cheap enough that you can just you know you need to get free shipping so you throw one on and then you throw a pair on so you've got uh parts laying around for a project Zarbo, first of all, Zarbo Audio Projects is in the house. By the way, congratulate this man. He just got over 1,000 subscribers, and a lot of that is because of you guys, and I really appreciate you guys subscribed to. Amazing channel. If you haven't seen the stuff that he does, it is so good. And he just won uh, an award at Parts Express Design Competition. He he actually won one oh, of the- Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm not a bit I'm, surprised. I'm not either. He's, he's I, so I'm not he, a bit surprised. He places every time. He is so good. And he said he has a Dayton Epic five and a half inch sub dedicated as a sub and it shakes the walls. And these things are, they're very impressive as a mid range. It's pretty cool. If you guys haven't got a chance to, yeah, hit the, oh yeah, hit the like button and, and feel free to subscribe to Zarbo Audio Project. It's, he's got a really cool channel. I, I love his channel. Um, What were we talking about? Oh, mid range. So, yeah, that polycone is really interesting. It's it's six and a half inch, right? And they've had them for yes, like yes. a long time. Oh yeah, they used to use them in the B six five twos. So mm -hmm. if you ever listen to the Dayton B six five twos, it's the same driver that's in them, and a lot of people love those. Um, quick spec V four D has a question. Uh, what's a good priced mid range mid base with a real phase plug? Um. As far as car audio goes, I don't see a lot of a lot of those with face plugs. Some of the kind of the pro audio drivers do, um, but they're out there. You just got to find them. I happen to have another prop that might answer that question. Um, I got this in the other day, and this right here is it's it's pretty beefy. It's it's much heavier than the other one. This is the RS one hundred and eighty. Uh, it's an aluminum cone, has a face plug, and so that's one that I think is mid range price. It's maybe it's sixty bucks. Yeah. And I, I would say that's, and that is really well sought after in the car community. And I, and I used to actually, one of my products projects and liked it as well. It's uh, it's oversized. They, they market it as a seven inch driver. And so you can tell compared to the six and a half that it is, Oh, camera work. <laughs> is. As you can see, it's a lot different size, right? Um, it's a lot, <laughs> it's, it's a little bigger than the uh, six and a half. And you can really tell when you try to mount them in something. Yeah. Face plugs are cool. You get a little more high frequency extension or high, high frequency out of it. Right. But not necessary. I like, I like that one. I like that RS. Uh, that's the 180, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I like the 180. That's a good, that's a good driver. All right. What else do you have on your list? I feel like, I feel like I've been showing off all my, uh, all my props here and I, and I, <laughs> am I thinking, do you, do you have any props to show off? Because that's all I, my mid-range speakers. That I'm only if I brought the camera in the other room. But I'll, I'll I'll mention this one because I think it's, I personally think it's the best value television out on the market. Uh, this is my opinion. Some people are going. So you remember a, a while ago, and it's like early two thousands, early nineties or whatever. Samsung was starting to come into the TV market and starting to hit hard, and they were lower price, but they were really good. But before that, you wouldn't touch a Samsung. Because mm -hmm. Samsung is known as terrible quality. And you're like, I don't want to buy that. That's junk. I bet the picture's thing. And then all of a sudden they changed their everyone's how they people yeah, you look at Samsung, they're they're sought as one of the best brands out there. 
this is what's happening with this particular one. I'm going to share the screen and then I'm going to go to the website. This is Hisense. Mm, right. Hisense is a brand that if you would have mentioned to me, I don't know, five, six years ago, I would have laughed at you. I've been like, I'm not buying a Hisense. This is a 55 inch television that's 400, under $400 right now, $398. Mm -hmm. Cheaper than what I actually bought it for. This has Dolby Vision on it. It has uh, HDR on it. I plugged this thing up in our game room because our my old Samsung TV died and I had to replace it. it. It didn't die. One HDMI input still worked, but it was like, that's going to go sooner than later. I don't know when. So we're just going to replace it before it happens. We put this thing in there and I started playing just Netflix 4K. My jaw hit the ground. The picture quality on this is un. I cannot imagine a, a better $400 television than this. I mean, this this is like if I would have bought a TV even two years. I, in fact, I bought a TCL a few years ago that also was known for its quality. And this blows it out of the water. It's unbelievable how good it is. It's a QLED. Um, and it's just it's it's unbelievable. So close to getting one of those on Black Friday. And. This is an interesting thing is this high sense. This is the um, let me see what model this is. This is the Q6H or something. Like, oh, yeah, there U6H, the 55 U6H. This is a brand new model. They had uh, one last year that was like the G6 or the U6G, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, I haven't reviewed this on Amazon, but I'm just telling you right now, if you're in the model a mode for a television, 55 inch for 400. 65 for 550 and a 75 for 750 dollars <laughs> i've been i've been considering replacing the one downstairs because it's so good i've been like i'm holding out for an oled you know, picture and i'm like maybe I'm, now, I'm, now, now to me that's still a lot for a tv but it's a freaking 75 inch tv oh we well, yeah, have 75 inch for 750 that's that's, that's that a power an inch yeah i mean, <laughs> an inch. I mean you know, that's crazy that's that's a huge TV, and I, I you know wasn't that long ago a TV that size you couldn't get one for less than a couple of grand. A uh, seventy-five inch would have been like four or five, probably. And, and yeah. it's and it's different because it's not like you're buying a fifty-five or seventy-five inch television for seven fifty or four. You're buying one that looks really really good mm -hmm. for four hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars. Because I think we need to because you can buy a lot of 55 inch televisions for $400, but you can't buy many that look really good. Gotcha. And that's the thing that got me too, is the HDR typically on a lot of these televisions that are lower price, they don't have enough brightness. So it struggles with them. And when I first watched, uh, I put on the Mandalorian and it was, this one was even struggling with the Mandalorian until I realized that the, the uh, Dolby vision, which I was Dolby vision has like four different settings. So I put on Dolby vision theater, bam, looked look perfect after that. So, you know, for me, if you're looking for a television, you don't want to spend a ton of money. I would give Hisense a shot. You know, the TV is the kind of thing I only buy when my old TV breaks or something like that, a live event, like moving or something, you need a new TV. But I'm looking at that going, oh, 75 inch TV be really nice. Put it back here behind me, you know, be a prop, you know, could put, run a, run an advertising on the back, maybe can sell some ad space or something. <laughs> And I, I think what Elliot's talking about is Samsung uh, is making one of those quantum dot or not Samsung. I mean, um, wait, was so Sony mm -hmm. got the wrong S use filmmaker mode. I heard you say that I didn't see filmmaker mode as an option. It might be an option. I'm not sure. I didn't, I really haven't explored it too much. It's in the kids game room. And I'm like, dang, I want this somewhere else. Like where I watch TV all the time. I'm like, man, playing games on this is awesome. Though it's, it's beautiful. It was a beautiful screen. Uh, it's really, really impressive. Yeah, what, was, uh, what game was, are you playing? I'm just kind of curious. So we just bought a Wii U for really cheap offline. Cause I always had this morbid curiosity. How good is a Wii U? What is it? You know, cause it never got took off. Right. We had one for a while. We still have it uh, laying in a closet somewhere. Uh, well, if you ever want to sell it, tell me because <laughs> I love it. And um, we, uh, I, uh, I, we bought a wind, Zelda Wind Wake or Z Zelda Wind Waker came with it. And I've been playing Zelda Wind Waker and my kids are, and I are also playing together Super Mario 3D World. 
we're playing. Oh yeah, got some Mario action. It's always good. <laughs> yes. Now, all right. Now that I went on my rant about television, which by the way I think is awesome, <laughs> what do you got for us? All right, let's see here. Um, I feel like I'm getting through my list really quick. Let me let me click on a link here and see what this what, what this link is. I might have a prop for this one as well. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, this is one yeah. that I want to I want to really quickly while you're talking about that mention AJC's comment. He said, "Hey, those are generally great, but Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision." Um, and then there's a price stamp, and he's right. There's that's one of the things that I think you need to. Like it's it's very rare to find a four hundred dollar television that supports Dolby Vision and can do it well, as well as HDR. So, it's it's just very very rare. And I think, it, I don't know. I I would tell you this. I, I would be very surprised if you weren't impressed with that television. All right, All go right. ahead. Joe. I got an amp. Let's uh, let's do a screen share real quick. Let's show off an amp. All right. So again, you know what I said earlier, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be the NVX show here, but um, um, store brands sometimes, house brands are sometimes the best deals. And so this is, I was just browsing NVX's what did website, you just say? Um, and what's store that? brands, house brands, what not are kidding. sometimes the best deals, right? So <laughs> yeah. this is a five channel amp. It's um, 80 watts by four into four ohms plus a 500 watt into two ohm substage five channel amplifier for $186 and 95 cents. Um, and I think that seems like kind of a bargain for me. Um, I think the only thing price wise that can probably touch it would be the pioneer five channel amps. I don't know how much those are running for at the moment, but pioneers has got some really good amps out there. that are really good bargains. And I think this looks like a killer deal. What do you oh, think? That's a crazy good deal because you could literally power your entire system off that one amplifier. Yeah. You know, yeah, one subwoofer and and, and uh, four speakers. That's especially for someone that doesn't want to go all out for like an SPL build. I think that's I think that's killer. I, I, you know, I mean, five hundred watts is plenty for a daily driver. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'd like to bench test it. That'd be fun to do. I'd like to have the opportunity to do that. Don't know if I will or not. Um, you got to be careful about buying amps because uh, I don't always get good views on my amp dyno stuff. Uh, so sometimes you buy the amp and you lose money on the video. So I'm, I'm a little bit leery about it but think about like a five channel one of the main advantages is you don't have to buy any fuse distribution blocks right you can use a four gauge uh, power wire fuse it at the battery and you don't need any more fusing run right to this thing and so you save money on fuse blocks and stuff like that so it's it's pretty handy to go that route is it big uh brian said is you need big? To he said you need to find somewhere in the car to install that um, beat. It's 18 by 7.8 by 2.4. So it is kind of kind of kind of long. Um, um That's wide what they're calling it. But no, it's not that bad. I mean I've seen I've seen bigger ones. Um that's <laughs> TWS. What <she> says. <laughs> yeah that's what we say in front of our kids TWS <laughs> our TWS uh, yes. TWS TWS gotcha. that's what she Yes. Um, but so I'm, I mean, is 18 inches wide for an amplifier? Is that a lot? I mean, it, it could be. Yeah. And I would consider that, I guess, I guess that is the width. I guess it depends on how you position right. it. I, don't, I mean, I, my personal feel, feeling is that your box is probably going to be bigger than 18 inches. So if you're going to put it on your box or something, it's probably. Yeah. They're not going to hide this under the front seat. You might be able to hide them. I mean, if you're putting it in the trunk, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's cool. I like it, and it's got the volume knob too. I like that too. That's probably yeah, just that's for the base subwoofer, knob. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, just for the just for the subwoofer, wired base remote. I like that. I think that's pretty sweet. So I think that's a pretty good deal. So now that we're talking amplifiers, I'm going to bring up what I think is is uh, uh, people are gonna people are gonna people are gonna uh, to, and. People are going to laugh at me on this, but I don't care because this is what I truly believe is the best value amplifier for your money for home audio, you know, for uh, I should say home home subwoofer. Um, and that's that's this. Let's go ahead and share my screen. And I, by the way, I don't care which version of this you get just get the one that the wattage works for you 
but it's the Pr Crown XTI amplifier. I really like the Crown XTI. This is um, this is the 1002. I have the 2002, which I really, really, really love. Um, you know, we mentioned the dampening factor earlier. Uh, here's the here's the 2002 right there. And that's the one I have. I like it a lot more than Behringer. I, I mentioned some details on the why I don't like the Behringer so much, but you have to change the fans out on the Behringer. You don't on the Crown. Some people have also mentioned the XLS and XLI. If you'd rather get an XLS or an XLI, I have no no beef with either of those either. They're both really good amplifiers. The XTI I like because you can put the fourth order 20 hertz high pass on there, and it's all done right there on the unit. I don't have to buy extra gear. Justin, you're muted again, bud. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so how do these things do? Are they, will they do their rated power? The crowns, uh, I, you know what? I have never tested a crown, you know, things like that, but they're supposed to. The, so here's the deal. Um, you know how we sometimes talk about like low brands versus high brand, you know, like some are like reputable and some are crowns, a very reputable name. They're made by the Harmon group. So if mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm. familiar with Harmon, they're very reputable. So I don't have any doubts that the output is that. Uh, and also the output seems to last longer. And in the, in the video, I actually showed you the cooling section on this. This is like a hundred percent like uh, cooling inside. It's, it's fantastic the way they did it versus something like the Behringer who just uses some fans. I also like the Dayton audio as well, uh, mainly because of the auto DSP. So if someone that wants auto DSP, big fan of the Dayton, but if you're into the DIY part and you want, you don't mind tuning your own subwoofers to your room, then I would say get one of the crown series. For me, it's the XTI series personally. Justin, stop muting yourself, dude. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. There's some noise going on in the background. So I'm muting to have some better audio quality. So, and that's, that's true because they're pro they're designed to take a beating. At least you hope. And like I said, I have a Behringer. I have no problems with it. No, no issues with it. I, I don't think it sounds as good as the Crown, um, but uh, they are designed to take a beating. And the Be the Behringer, I could not use inside my room until I changed the fans. It had to be changed. You see, if you've got to change the fans out, that really seems like, because I, I don't want to have to crack open an amplifier and change fans. But you lose, you lose your warranty as soon as you do that. So... Uh... Hi, Ashy Larry. How are you? <laughs> well, as soon as you change out the fans, you do. I mean, yeah. so okay. So those, those stickers on the boat, on the back of, on the back of things that say if you crack open this thing, you, your warranty is void, right? That doesn't like hold up in a court of law. That not only works if they're going to provide a whole lot of tech support for you. So you can you can open up the back of your amp and look at it. You're not going to void your warranty. Uh, you might have to you might have to go sue them to get them to do warranty work, but <laughs> that, that shouldn't be that shouldn't void the warranty. Who wants to do that? <laughs> they're they're betting on that, right? Hey, Ashley, it's good to see you, man. And we have we have missed you. Uh, and I have not tried the mono price. I would be interested in trying the mono price amps. The mono price seemed like a really good price as well. I, I haven't yeah. I haven't personally used those though. I don't have any experience with mono price. I've never I've never actually ever bought anything from mono price. And I, and I don't want to bring you things that we haven't used because, you know, we want to try to give you things that we've used. Speaking of that, you've used some tweeters. We've talked about woofers. We've talked about, yeah. we haven't talked about tweeters yet. So I'm curious what tweeter yours is that you recommend. So I don't have any tweeters on my list because I don't really <laughs> feel like I know a lot about tweeters. Um, I know that I, I believe that I prefer a soft dome tweeter. And I've got several laying around, but most of the tweeters that I bought for projects I bought because they were cheap or because they were interesting. Um, I'm using some AMT tweeters in my truck. I'm going to be swapping those out soon when I put these NVX uh, in. Uh, I've got some Hertz components I'm going to put in my kid's car that use a, uh, a, a plastic dome tweeter. And I'm okay. kind of curious how that's going to sound. I'm afraid that's going to be a little bit harsh. And so I don't really feel like I'm qualified to make a call on tweeters. I would like to try some of those GRS tweeters, ribbon tweeters that um, oh, yeah. Mars Express is selling because that looks like it might be fun in a home theater bill because it would look cool. But I just kind of feel like tweeters are outside of my area of expertise sometimes. No, I, I understand that. Uh, and I want to bring one that's not 
Dayton. That's not a house brand that I think is one of the best ones to use. They have two versions of this tweeter. And uh, I do believe people use this in car audio as well. Uh, but this is the uh, mm. Peerless XT 25G30. They also have the 60. And the 60 oh. has dual magnets versus single magnets. It's a ring that radiator. A, a ring radiator. My understanding is that thing in the middle that looks like a phase plug is, is fixed in position. And the diaphragm is actually attached to it. Is that right? I honestly couldn't tell you. But it sounds okay. good. Um. <laughs> Here's the reason why I like it. So pay attention to the red line. Peerless, Peerless, I think, shoots themselves in the foot a little by being too honest with their off-axis response. Did you see? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I see that. It looks terrible. However, you also got to remember they're doing 30 and 60 degrees off-axis where most oh. people are doing 15 and at most 30. Right. So, and this is way past 20K. So they're showing you up to 40K. Oh, so Lord. Really, you only have to worry here. And if there was a 15, it would be like in this range somewhere, you know. So I I just for most people ignore the off axis. Um, I I would say, but look at the on axis response. It is extremely flat all the way up to 20 kilohertz and then goes all the way up to 40 kilohertz for those that want that extra added 20 kilohertz <laughs> uh, up there where no one can hear. Right. So you can, you know, you can feel it. You can, you can, yes. Treble, you can feel. Treble, you can feel. And it, it has a low FS. You can cross this over fairly well. And it handles a lot of power. Uh, I think the XT25 says it can handle 110 watts RMS. Resident frequency of 436. So we typically say double that for, you know, what, you know, a good estimate of where you can cross this over is second order. So that's like 800 Hertz. So you can easily use this as yeah. in a two way system. And it's $28. It's so inexpensive, like 30 bucks to get yourself something like that. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't. Have you not used them before then? I've, I've not. I feel like I had to sit in my cart one time and, and decide to go a different route. Um, Andy's got a question on axis versus off. Explain for the guys in the back. Sure. Do you want to do it or do you want me to? So, so on axis means you're looking right at the speakers right in front of you. And then off axis basically means you're turning the speaker away from you. Well, right to you and then turning it away from you. Or you're moving right. off side right 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 and so if you're in a car and your tweeters are in the car door you're pretty much off axis um and we talked about last time in our speaker placements show that you know when you put tweeters in a car it's always in the wrong place unless you're building out pods or something so um the way to think about it it really boils down to kind of like beaming right the further off axis you get and the higher the frequencies uh the more the speaker beams the less you hear it off axis which is typically based off of the size of the speaker. So you right, can't really right. do it. This is a very dusty passive radiator that's been in here for a long time. <laughs> but so this would be directly on axis, zero degrees, and then 15 degrees, you know, 30 degrees, for, which I don't know why my speaker is moving, you know, because you're moving off axis of the speaker. Now, right, assuming right. this is in front of you, right? Not right. So, not the, right so the speaker is here and, and you're moving <laughs> off axis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's just think about the way your speakers are in a car door, how they're not really <laughs> aimed right at your face where they should be. Which is really important because as you move off axis in a room, you want it to sound similar. And so when you're designing a speaker, some people will design that on axis to be flat. Some people will design it even to go up, assuming that you're going to be off axis most of the time. And so they want that to be flat. It's really going to be dependent on the designer, you know, and and what they're going for. Nick, I need your opinion on something. All this right. This is something that I threw up on the list that I'm honestly not sure if it's a good deal. Um, and tell me what you think about uh, these bash plate amplifiers. Is it okay I'm if not, I bash uh, them? <laughs> you sure. I mean, because so this is a 500 watt plate amp for 340 bucks. Um, I've used. Um, I've not used the bash before. Uh, I've used a couple other brands. I've used uh, parts express has their own own brand and some other brands they sell, but I've never, never used the bash. Uh, are they any good? Is this a good deal at 340 bucks? So bash is, is a well-known uh, plate manufacturer. If anyone's ever had a Klipsch subwoofer, they almost always use bash subs. 
my experience with bash is this um i've had both eclipse sub 10 and a sub 12 uh different times someone gave me the sub 10 and i bought the sub 12 a long time ago both of them the amplifiers died because of what the if you scroll if you look on the back they have some glue that goes on if you look at the pictures on the left hand side they have some uh yeah they have that glue that goes on it uh you on the other picture and they have it here too up in the corners but that glue ended up my understanding of it it would uh over time it would start to uh allow current so you see it like on the capacitors and stuff like that and then it will fry the boards and then you're done i don't oh, know yeah. if that's still a thing. yeah i see the yeah. glue the glue is actually on the circuit board that kind of brown stuff down there yeah and then eventually i guess it shorts out the components and i don't know if that's still the case i don't know if it is but every bash amplifier that i've had eventually died now keep in mind we're talking 10 years later or so it's not like it died <laughs> two years down the road or something and honestly 10 years later you want new gear anyway so yeah the glue becomes conductive with age says the true voice of reason and that sounds like a bad design decision right there to use something that becomes conductive with age it it, it does to me and i don't i don't know so to me I've been turned off with bash because of that, but they're really good. I mean, they usually, I mean, they're, they're a good brand for sure. So if I wanted 500 Watts for a subwoofer in my home, what other options do I have? I mean, I think, I think Brian's got it right. I think you use a PA, a separate amplifier. So for me at that range, I would rather own the Dayton audio one, which is 550 bucks, a little bit more expensive, $200 more, but it does 1160 watts output and and it does auto dsp gotcha so for me i'd rather do the apa 1200 dsp or go with like a crown xti 1002 or something like that there you go ladies and gentlemen you have your answer this is not the world's greatest deal according to nick but it's also well, cheaper than those options so maybe it is okay no, I think it's a good deal. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Okay. So what what I would say though is I believe the Dayton is a class A B and the Bash is a class D. So depending on sound quality. how you feel about that, yeah. Well, depending on how you feel about that, efficiency, might. right? The class D is more efficient. There's a lot to be said for an increased efficiency. You might not have a, a 20 amp circuit to plug this into, right? That, that's a good point. Or Where, you might have well, all of your stereo equipment plugged into this thing, and then maybe it's bad, bad, right? And Frederick was talking about that. You know, the XTIs are A, B, and the XLS is Class D. Um, and he's right. The XTI has a much more powerful DSP. The XLS is a very basic DSP, and I don't believe you can go past 30 hertz, lower than 30 hertz on the XLS series and, with their and, DSP. And most plate amps, home plate amps, are, are 4 ohm. Is that right? It's very rare to find one that's 2 ohm compatible. Uh, quick spec uh, V4D was asking about that. I don't see a lot of home audio stuff that's too home stable. No, I, I don't know. Of, well, once again, that's where you'd go to pro audio. Right. I mean, I think that's where you say, okay, I'm going to go to pro audio. All right. There's, there's one more thing I really want to talk about before we leave. Oh yeah. We got time. Talk about it. Yeah. Here's the deal. Some people. All right. A few years ago, I tried a hundred dollar projector from Amazon. It was actually sent to me to do a review on it. The review never came out because it was awful, awful. And I feel like you buy a hundred dollar projector just because you don't want to buy a thousand dollar projector or because you want to bring it outside or maybe you don't even know if you want to use a projector or not. So anyway, another projector company asked me again, do you want to do another projector and i said okay and this is it this is the company it's called hap run it's 80 bucks right now 80 dollars, and it comes with a 100 inch projector screen which i didn't realize it came with the screen and the screens are all riveted too so it's actually a, a it's it's wait, just wait, it's, it's it's a projector a 1080p projector and, and a it's screen actually and a for screen 90 for 80, bucks. 80 because you got a 10 dollar coupon right now Oh, oh, I couldn't see that because the screen's tiny. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. So if you make, uh, if you make, if you hide us, you can make the screen bigger where it's just the, where it's just your, your, your browser. Now I got to be honest. Now I haven't um, tested this. Uh, 
I haven't tested this on um, in a bright room. I've I've only tested this in a dark room. It's very very impressive for eighty bucks. Um, I hooked it up with HDMI. I hooked it up uh, through my laptop and Nvidia Shield, and the picture quality is actually very good for a hundred for eighty dollars. It's it's one of these things. It's like it's surprising me because the other one that I had was awful. I mean, I was like, dude, I cannot tell anyone to go buy that. It's like the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. This is not bad. It has Bluetooth. I, I didn't try the Bluetooth, and I, I probably won't because I don't I don't know why I would do that. Um, but yeah, and the screen's actually and they have three different modes on it. It's pretty good. The only thing is you're very limited to where you put it. It does have a digital zoom of some sorts on there, but mm -hmm. it, it only mm -hmm. has tilt up and down, and that's it. And it's just this, if you see that little slider on it, that's all it is, is the tilt. And then there's a fine focus and that's it. So, you know, I mean, that's what you're getting with an $80 projector. You're not going to get, you know, where you can digitally go in and adjust every corner to make it fit perfectly. Like my $3,500 um, JVC. But I, I'll tell you this, like if I had a, a dark room or I wanted to use this at night, like a outside movie nights. Yeah, I would. I would be so into that. $80. I mean, can you even buy a hundred inch screen for that much? What's a hundred? <laughs> not a name off? brand. It, it's not a name brand. I mean, it's just spandex, but it does have the rivets in it, which is nice because that means you could, you don't need anything to hang it except, you know, rope that's, or that's whatever. That's hundred inch across the diagonal. Is that right? Yeah. hundred inch diagonal. I'm, over, you know. I'm over here doing some a squared plus B squared equals C squared in my head, trying to figure out, um, <laughs> trying to figure out what the what the uh, what the dimensions are on that. Yeah, and Andy's right. So a lot of these companies they'll trick you because what they'll say on it is they'll say 1080p capable or something like that. And and what it means is they're not giving you a high definition projector. They're giving you like a 480 projector, but it can accept a 1080p signal. And someone will say 4K capable. Yeah, you know, like well, anything's going to accept the signal. It's just what it's going to output. You know, right. Um, they say the lumen rating is like 9,500. I, I don't know what its actual lumen rating is, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't. I, I'm not, And also, you know, it. I would never tell anyone to buy a projector to listen to the speakers in there. Cause, <laughs> right. You know. Right, right. I have a, a non-audio item. Can I do a non-audio item? Oh, yeah. I want to hear. I, I, um, I'm actually really curious. It is 16 always, by now like to do things that uh, there are tools every night when I can. Um, and it's one of those things you know, we're looking for good values here. We're not looking for the cheapest. We're not looking for the most expensive. We're looking for what gives you the bang for the buck. I was doing some filming in a car and I, I, I just couldn't film in it. Right. The footage was terrible. The camera would auto auto adjust and uh, it would have, have grainy footage. And so I got to looking around for some in-car lights and I went to Harbor Freight because they had some stuff on sale and got to looking at what they had I ended up not buying the one on sale. This is a bar that has this little tab on it right here. So you can expand it and hang something like from the hood of the uh, roof of the car, right? Or mm. like off the seats or something. And it has these two little spots right here where you can mount a light to it. And it comes with one of these lights. And I bought a second one. This is the Icon brand from Harbor Freight. And it's on this like badass magnet, right? This is, this is pretty brutal when you, when, you, when you put it against something. And this is a 2400 lumen light, y'all. And you stick this in a car and you turn that sucker on. Oh, right. <laughs> so, right. And there's two of them. And what's cool about it is because there's two of these mounts, you can aim them in two different spots, right? <laughs> and um, and like aim from two different angles so that you're not in front of the light blocking your light when you're filming or working on the car. So it's like a hangs under the hood and you stick two of these on and you got like 10 gazillion lumens <laughs> that you can aim anywhere <laughs> you want when working on things. And it's 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 about 160 bucks this setup. Uh, it's battery is, powered? Yes, yes. See, that's cool because that that I like that. And it might crap out in 20 minutes because it's, you know, it might die this time next week because it is Harbor Freight, but it's got a 90 day warranty on it. So if it makes it past 90 days, I mean, it's just kind of like, I mean, so the other night um, I we were at a Mexican restaurant having a meal with my, uh, with my family and, uh, and we were in separate cars. We met, you know, stuff going on. We met there and on the way back home, I'm driving home and I get a call 
and it's the you know other carload of people flat tire and it was dusk and i said okay let me drop off one of the kids here at the house run to the garage and grab a few tools and what i grabbed was just this <laughs> and it was so nice to be able to set these things up cuz these lights are um on, let me make sure it's off before I aim it at the camera. They're on these uh, rotators right here, right? So you can just yes. aim it at whatever you want. So if you just aim these at the tire, plenty of light to work on changing a tire. And um, and the magnets are just absolutely brutal. So they stick to about anything. Um, and so I thought that was a good deal. Uh, that's a great deal. I, I like that as well. I, I just put um, under the counter lights in our kitchen made such a big difference and i i would imagine doing that on a vehicle especially when you're working at it because a lot of times when you're working on it you mm -hmm. have the battery disconnected mm -hmm. so I, I could see that being huge and i i could even see that even in my house like when i shut off the power to like change out outlets and stuff like that'd be nice yeah yeah that's um that's a winner by the way everyone wants to know what you ate at the mexican joint um i do believe that i had a burrito it may have been a chimichanga. I just, I want to, <laughs> there's a big difference. <laughs> so John said, Hey, I just clicked the affiliate link for that projector. Add it to my cart. Super close to caving. I, I'm just going to be honest. I, I don't think you will go wrong at 80 dollars. I really don't. I don't think you'll be. And you're, you're welcome to come back and yell at me if you want to. Of course you can return it to Amazon easily enough as well, but it's really, it's really impressive. Honestly, before I had my, um, uh, projector i have now which is a jvc dla which by the way is significantly better than the hundred dollar projector and it should be it's thirty five hundred dollars once a hundred dollars or 80 bucks but before that one i had an epson 6300 you know what i'd have to look at it and i i, I probably did need to change the lamp so i want to give it credit that it probably needed the lamp change but the picture quality was actually better on this one and on the $80 one than the Epson. It's, it, it just makes me believe that I probably need to change the lamp in the Epson, but it's really good. Um, I would have, I, I might even put it up against the W1070. The W1070 obviously has more of the, the, the ways to like correct it so that you can get the screen position, right? And that's where you're, you're limited in the $80 range is you really have to get that screen you, know, you have to put your projector in the right spot. But if you do get it, we want to hear what you think of it. Right, Justin? Stop muting yourself. Hey, sorry, there's noise in the background. You know, one of the <laughs> one of the scariest things to me about doing this whole YouTube thing is when I mention products and drop an affiliate link in the description, I'm always worried someone's going to click on it, buy it, and absolutely hate it or have a really bad experience with it. But if you do have a bad experience with it, I kind of want to know so I can not recommend it. If I get a big like avalanche of everyone saying, yeah, this thing sucks. Please don't recommend it anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and uh, I mean, I haven't had any issues with it. We watched a whole movie outdoors and everyone was really impressed with the quality of it. And that was before I, I found the different like user settings and ways that you could calibrate it. Although, I mean, it's very limited in the calibration you can do, right? Like I think it's like brightness, contrast, some minor calibration things. But it does have things like, uh, it has three different modes. And one of them, I, I can't remember what it's called, dark mode or something. But it actually has, you know, because typically with a projector, especially an LED or so, the blacks are pretty gray. And that's just what you're getting with those types versus like a DLP projector or something like that. But in that particular mode, and I got to remember what it's called, the blacks were actually pretty darn good. I was like, this is actually pretty impressive. I mean, 80 bucks for a projector, even if it sucks, it's an A to projector. Yeah. I, oh, hey, Ashley Larry just pulled the trigger on one. Dude, I, I cannot wait. You, you tell me about it. I cannot wait till you tell me about that because... I, I want to hear your unfiltered thoughts, which I'm sure you'll give me. Yeah, kids don't care how good it looks. I do, though. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's true. And there is there is some truth to that. Toy <laughs> can't read that one. But yeah, that, that, there is some truth to that. All right, man. So we're, we're out of time. But I do want to let you know, is there anything else you want to talk about before we go? 
Uh, other than next week, it is a holiday, and I think we'll probably take the take the night off, take Monday night off. What do you think, Nick? Take Monday night off? Yeah, I think we should. I think everyone should have that day off. Just enjoy time with your family. You know, most of you guys aren't working, and I think that's a great thing. You know, we're all about family time here. Right. What do you have coming up on your channel, Nick? What's your next big thing? Boom, right behind you. The Epic build is coming out. It's going to be out probably Sunday. I finally have fine-tuned the crossover. I'm happy with it. Passive radiators are tuned correctly, and the base on these things is pretty insane. So uh, if you want to call these... Uh, the pretties because they're not the uglies, <laughs> you know, that's pretty much what they are, but they're a smaller version of the uglies base bumps like heck. And they're just really, they sound really good. Um, a lot of that, you know, CSS tweeter is also, you know, good on there, but those epics with the passive radiators, they're just very clean sounding. Awesome. Well, I just dropped a video on my channel where I did a, um, a review of a, um, what was it? It was a scar audio subwoofer. Yeah. Scar. Um, and hang on, I got a little problem. I, I used, I bought an SPL meter. And so thank you to my patrons because I could not afford an SPL meter if it weren't for my patrons. I try really hard to, uh, um, take the money the patrons give and lay it aside to buy, things that I can use to make better videos. So that video is out. Uh, a lot of people seem to be watching it. It's had a good response. And so I hope it continues to have a good response. I probably won't get a video out this coming Sunday just because things are hectic right now uh, at the uh, at the day job. So, uh, but I am working on my uh, polyfill video. And so Nick, I'll need to compare some notes with you because that video is gonna be, it's gonna be very controversial. So, uh, and after that, I've got a stack of stuff that MVX has sent me. You've seen some of it tonight to review. So I've got a lot of work to do here. So I'm going to be really busy. <laughs> uh, so those who are listening in, Nick is now hugging his bag of polyfill, which is appropriate because it is pillow stuffing. And what I'm going to start doing with polyfill is I'm not going to ever buy any more. I'm just going to wait for my wife to buy my dog a chew toy and he tears them up <laughs> and leaves polyfill over the house. So I just collect that and keep it in a bag. That's what I use for polyfill. I'm just saying, if, if, you, if you're going to get some props out, I'm going to get some props out too. Uh, <laughs> I like props. Props are fun. <laughs> Yeah, I do too. Obviously, Polly, fill it up. Yeah, guys, I, I'm super excited. Oh, by the way, another thing that no one's going to care about, and I'm going to try to get maybe that projector video out this week too, but um, it'll be this week or maybe the next week. But um, my son lost his first tooth today. So I'm pretty excited about that. He's super excited. He's running around showing everyone his mouth. He's like, look at my mouth. I lost a tooth. And so we're all, we're all excited for him. So I'm hoping the Tooth Fairy visits him today. I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping for that. Is he going to bring a, bring him some subwoofers or something? Or <laughs> He's going to wake up with a subwoofer under his pillow. So the Tooth Fairy brought me a subwoofer, Dad. <laughs> He's going to bring him a CD of Bass Mechanic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll probably bring him something more appropriate for his age. But <laughs> uh, let's hope so. All right, guys. Man, this has been great. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Like I said, we will not be tuning in next week, like Justin said. So we'll see you guys the following week. This is Toys DIY Audio and Justin. We're out. We're out.